Hello, and welcome to this episode of Cinema Symposium. I'm Matthew Duvall. And I'm Blake Warman. And today we're going to do episode two, our, our second news dump, and I'll just get right into it. Uh, sh- this comes from Chicago I-N-N-O, Chicago N-O, uh, dot com. Title is, Chicago's first film and media incubator is out to build a new Hollywood. Subtitled, but will rounders call to defer film tax credits limit the incubator's impact? So, basically what this article is about, and I'll read from a couple paragraphs at least. Um, well, here, I'll just stay here. Start here. Stage 18, Chicago's first film and media incubator, launched June 30th in wake of Governor Bruce Rauner's instructions to defer film tax credits to productions shot in Illinois, raising questions as to whether the city is as friendly a filmmaking environment as it was a year ago. Uh, Rauner's move is part of a larger $400 million in spending cuts proposed in the 2016 budget, and though his decree has questionable legal force, the implications of his apparent lack of support for Illinois' burgeoning film industry are likely to impact Chicago's ability to attract new projects. And we will provide the link in the uh, description below the video, so if you want to read the rest of that, you can. What it boils down to is, though, um, the governor of Illinois, Governor Rauner, is basically... Tr- Illinois gives people a 30% tax credit uh, on all film and TV projects at least spending at least $100,000 in Illinois. So um, what that does is it gives people, film production companies, more of a reason to come to Illinois and make their films in Illinois. Uh, that gives more opportunities to people who are like indie cinema, uh, indie filmmakers, indie film actors, uh, more opportunities to be a part of these productions. It really helps a lot of people who are trying to make films in Illinois basically. And if they're going to take away that tax credit, it means that these films are less likely to come to Illinois and people are just, that's just not good in my opinion and and, and it's stopping money from being spent in Illinois. I don't think it's a good move. Uh, What do you think? Um, I definitely don't think it's an intelligent move by any means. Uh, If you live in Illinois like like me and Matt uh, do, uh, we know how poor this general state is uh by doing something like that and having that tax credit it's not going to help anybody and I, especially i think this is actually a good op- and i and i think it's if anything i would expect more people to want to come to illinois and film uh and it's and not you would know more about this just because of your recent filming you film uh in illinois and so is uh ben uh Haney, who's uh we've talked to before and both of both of you have done in general independent films that have worked out well just from what you guys have done i'll say one real quick little thing in response to that um like i said in the story it's only for film productions that are spending at least a hundred thousand dollars so i don't have that kind of money to spend on my films neither <laughs> a lot of people but the, the point is that it brings these large productions to illinois and it's people filmmakers like me who don't have that money uh, to be around those productions. And that's all I'll say about that. No, I completely agree. Um, on to um, my story. Um, Forbes just released an article uh, today talking about the Forbes uh, top ten highest paid actors. And the list kind of surprised me in some ways, um, at least uh, just on who's on the top five. I'll start from the bottom, work my way up. Uh, number five, Adam Sandler with $41 million. Um, number four, Bradley Cooper with $41.5 million. That makes sense to me. Number three, Vin Diesel, uh, $47 million, which kind of makes sense after the success of uh, Furious 7. Um, Jackie Chan, number two, with $50 million. Of and of course, Robert Downey Jr. with $80 million, And he's only done really two movies, but one of them was done by his own production company. So really, he's only done one movie, which was Avengers Age of Ultron and got an $80 million paycheck for it. I I am so shocked that Adam Sandler made it on this list. Um, Apparently, Jackie Chan, uh, and uh, the reason why he's number two is because of some clever marketing that was done on a film that he uh, released to uh, China, and it was an overseas big great. So that's more the reason why uh, he's number two. But Adam Sandler, the fact that he is actually on this list shocks me so much especially because recently i just uh today watched pixels and i'm so sick and tired of this i'm gonna say this right now stop giving this guy money please stop giving him money 
or specifically studios, stop like giving him movies to work with. Stop, please. Let him do. I think if anything, he should be doing movies that are worth getting on Netflix for free. That's my opinion. I don't know about you. <laughs> well, I would completely agree with the sentiment of stop giving him money. I don't. Who does go see his films? There must be people. But I, I am not one of them, and I, I guess birds of a feather flock together, but I I don't know anyone who does. Where are they making? I, I, yes, it surprises me that Adam Sandler is number five on that list, but I'm just, I'm just I'm actually struggling, especially whenever tickets cost so much. There's, there's actually problems with people going to the box office. Now, if they're including numbers from, like, video-on-demand sales and things like that, then that would maybe make a bit more sense. Are they, are they, are they actually taking it just from ticket sales? No idea. It's just not even. It doesn't make sense to me logically. Like these other actors, I can actually it make like Robert Downey Jr., Bradley Cooper, Vin Diesel. It all makes sense to me. They have both. They have all done great movies, and they. It doesn't surprise me that they're getting the paychecks that they're getting. Jackie Chan, according to the article, it was done, He got that money more because of just some clever marketing overseas, which is you know what if that works out. That's great. Even it's. I'm sorry, but even with marketing, it's hard to. Sell me on an Adam Sandler movie. It really is. Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that he must be making movies. I, the thing that makes it surprising to me is that apparently this means people like his films. <laughs> okay, but he's the only person who every time, the only time I hear people talk to about him is in the context of how bad his films are. So that's what it's like. Two does not equal two in this equation here because. People are seeing his movies, yet I only ever hear people say bad things. I don't understand. Anyways, kind of in the vein of people going to movies, I found a story uh, on a website is that pulled up here, called ScreenRant.com. And here is the title. Paramount and theater chains teaming for video-on-demand film release strategy. And I'm just going to read, I think, the first three paragraphs because that kind of sums up the entire article. Making the trek to the theater is still an old pastime of many movie fans, but in recent years, the multiplex has lost a bit of its luster. Rising ticket prices, expensive concessions, and people on cell phones are just a few of the reasons why some are hesitant to go out and see a new release. The increasing presence of streaming services like Netflix have something to do with it, too, as they allow viewers to watch thousands of titles from the comfort of their own living room. Obviously, that does not include the most recent productions playing at your local theater, but that may be changing in the future. THR is reporting that theater chains, National Amusements, uh, list a few of them, are among those teaming up with Paramount to take part in a radical new video-on-demand release strategy. The plan is for the studio to put out their low-budget films, such as Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension, and Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, both expected to play in around 300 theaters on digital and on-demand services just 17 days after their theatrical premieres. As per the agreement, Paramount will split the revenue from the video-on-demand rentals between the participating theaters for 90 days. All right. That, to me, is very, very interesting because it is true, at least from what I can perceive, that less and less people are going to go actually to see movies in a theater. And I've always wondered if what, you know, what was going to happen, what was going to be the next thing. Way back when, in like the 40s and the 50s, um, whenever the television first came out, that was like the first crisis for movie theaters because people were like, oh my gosh, I can watch a motion picture in my home. I can watch a TV show in my home. They stopped going to the movie theaters. And interestingly enough, the history behind that, they focused so much on what the film industry did was add color. They added, uh, they messed with the, the, the screen aspect ratio. Um, they started adding multiple screens, like some on the sides, like to, to get your peripheral vision in. They did so much stuff. That was what they did to get people to come back to the movies. And they, they added surround sound and things like that. And I'm like, in today's digital world, where more and more the, you can get that movie experience at home, what are they going to do? How are they going to make them going to the movie theaters so much better than going home to justify the price, the outrageous, usually, price of going to the movies? And the answer, apparently, is looking like they're going to just let you watch the movies at home. <laughs> it's just to get rid of that experience completely. And I'm, I mean, that to me, okay. if I'm reading the tea leaves right, if I'm, if I'm looking at the writing on the wall and reading between the words, if that has to me, it's, it's just, I don't know. It, and it also gives more access, like we were talking about in the uh, interview with Ben Haney, uh, 
to, to indie filmmakers to be on par, to have parity with these big uh, multi-million, hundred million dollar movies. I find this fascinating. This is definitely fascinating. It's it's un it's a it's an interesting move. Uh, it makes sense. I think they're finally have uh, gotten to the point where they've realized that people watch things online. People are like a a good portion of people watch Netflix, have Netflix, and are fine with streaming services. Um, but the fact that it really seems like the movie theater like uh, it looks like they're it looks like they're caving. Just caving into uh, that idea because there's no other way out of it, and I and I and I'll admit it. Like there's really no no way out of it sometimes in these type of situations because movies do cost money um, and it's a pain. I mean, I know a good portion of friends who uh, they'll watch movies online for free uh, through pirating sites or whatever, and that's what's killing movies too, uh, especially on theatrical releases. But I will say this: as much as that does. That is an interesting move. I still feel like with certain movies, with certain experiences, nothing nothing's going to take away, personally, from the movie-going experience. Um, I will say, going to a normal movie that's not IMAX or anything like that, yeah, that's not really any different from me sitting at home and watching a movie other than it's a bigger screen. But I will say, nothing can replace like certain uh, things like IMAX uh, experiences or anything like that. Uh, no matter what you get, whether it's a 4K TV with 3D or not, it's never going to, it's not going to be able to take away that kind of experiences in some ways. So I'm a little iffy, but then again, I, I might cave in and I might do that. You know, I might just, you know, work over seven bucks to watch it on demand. Who knows? Um, but on that note, uh, and on the sort of a similar note about people going to the movie theaters, um, recently, if you didn't hear, uh, there was a recent uh, movie theater shooting in Louisiana at the trial of a, a uh, and basically what happened was there was a shooting, and then on cinema on com they did a story uh, entitled "How Americans Feel About Going to the Movies After the Lu Louisiana Mass Shooting." And when they spoke to people, uh, they did a, re a research firm, C4, conducted a survey of 250 moviegoers on July 28th and July 29th. And according to uh, Variety, uh, this is just a quote uh, from, he from Variety, um, and they, basically this is what they found. They said nearly a third of moviegoers believe that bags and purses should be checked for weapons before people go into a theater, and 34% of people believe that lobbies should have armed security personnel and metal detectors. This I find very interesting, um, just because it, it's it's scary that the thought that a movie theater needs to have that people think a movie theater needs to have armed guards now just to be safe and if, and also if they were to implement new security systems like that or uh, they actually said what it would cost would be three dollars more per ticket for the movie which that makes sense given if you're wanting that sort of safety it's gonna cost a little extra chunk of change to go to the movies but it's still a scary thought that People just don't feel safe going to watch a movie, and and there should and I never thought there would be a day where someone would just go into a movie theater and start shooting people for no reason. It's one it's one of those thoughts that just gets you because I I remember when the uh, Aurora shooting uh, happened at the Dark Knight uh, Rises premiere. I was actually at a Dark Knight Rises. Uh, opening in Charleston, Illinois, and my mom freaked out because there was this big shooting that she heard about, and I was at a midnight premiere, and she was thinking there was some big thing, and I was like, no, I'm fine, don't worry. But it's just scary to think that some people would actually do something like that. What are, what are your thoughts, Matt? Yeah, pretty quickly here. I I remember my first movie, going to my first movie was probably like 1992 or something, 93 or something like that, and I've been to several since then. I haven't been to one for a while, but Never, ever, ever have I associated going to the movies with danger. And I still don't. But I think maybe that's because, I don't, I don't know, do you, do you feel like there's danger when you go to like, the last movie you saw, or did you feel like you were afraid to go there? No, uh, I really didn't. Uh, 
And it's surprise and it, and it's surprising that like some people do feel like they're in danger in a movie theater. So the reason I ask is like neither do I when I go to a movie. And the thing of it is, is that I can these shootings, as far as I can tell, are happening in like large cities, or at least larger cities than where we're from. You know, I and if they if they were to do this in a large city, I could see like say there's six different theaters in this large city. And two of them have decided to these extra security measures. If you're gonna, if you want that security, you go to those movie theaters and you pay those movie theaters three extra dollars per ticket, and you can get what you want. Or if you don't care, you go to one that's three dollars cheaper and doesn't have the security. But there's like for Charleston and Matt too, and there's one theater, maybe two. Like there's an older one, but I, there's just one main theater basically that the two <laughs> communities share. And if they, if people demand that they do that and they do it, well, there's no other option. You're going to be paying three extra dollars per ticket, whether you care about your security being more secure or not. Uh, same down here in Effingham. So I don't personally want to pay three dollars more for a situation that I already don't feel afraid in. I really hope this doesn't become a trend. And, my, that, and maybe I'm, maybe other people, in, in, maybe it's different in larger cities. I don't know, but but that's just my thoughts. Yeah. Well, on that note, uh, this is a. Uh, basically our news dump today and also I just want to uh, let everybody know who's out there uh, to like and subscribe uh, on our channel here uh, and also don't forget to comment uh, we want we need new ideas all the time for different things that we want to talk about because this isn't just about us we want to know what our audience wants to hear so yeah. Uh, that, okay. oh, yeah real quickly here we got one comment we got our first comment on YouTube and I was like we were oh. so happy and we responded and that's what we <laughs> want to be doing more often so I'm just Adding more to what Blake said, yes, please subscribe and please do comment. Well, on that note, uh, I'm Blake Borman. And I'm Matthew Duvall. And this is Cinema Symposium, signing off.